Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. The officers were, uh, rocks were being thrown at them, uh, slingshots with rocks, some asphalt, some water bottles, some burning uh, uh, logs and that type of thing, which just all ups uh, uh, our stance as far as the protection of the officers and everybody involved. The Dakota Access Pipeline is about 85% constructed, and the only remaining work to be completed in North Dakota is the section under Lake Oahe. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. After an intense clash on Highway 1806 overnight, tensions over the pipeline remain high. At a news conference today, the Morton County Sheriff's Department discussed the altercations that began last night and carried over into the early morning. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Chair has come out saying law enforcement continues to engage in unlawful and dehumanizing tactics and referred to them using water cannons. Today, the Morton County Sheriff's Office confirmed that water cannons were not used Sunday night and that they used hoses from fire trucks to put out fires and used a water mist to repel protesters. No, we don't have water cannons. Uh... Uh, you know, I don't know where that the, the term water cannon comes from. This is just a, uh, uh, a fire hose. And uh, basically the fire trucks were called down there because of the fires uh, that were started before and the, the numerous fires that were occurring uh, during the time that these activities were, were coming on. Uh, as a result of that, uh, some of the, the, the water uh, was used uh, to repel uh, some of the protest activities uh, that were uh, occurring and uh, it was used at, at a time to where uh, they were aggressive towards the officers and when that was no longer occurring, uh, the water wasn't used anymore. The Dakota Access Pipeline protest has gained nationwide attention with some protesters targeting the media, including Valley News Live. Our Ashley Bishop has been investigating the calls and reasons behind protesters' actions. Ashley? That's right, Andrea. Social media websites like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram have helped share the events taking place out west. And now, a campaign has begun to target media organizations that protesters feel are being biased towards them. Lists like this one, telling people to call different North Dakota agencies, have been spreading on social media, along with lists targeting the media. Here's how it works. Activists call a television station and ask why reporters aren't covering the pipeline protest. Many admit they've been told to call us from a list. Today in our newsroom, we got calls from more than two dozen people from states like New Jersey, Florida, Texas, California, and Colorado. One social justice warrior agreed to do an interview. What it is like is essentially, I guess, somebody trying to bring the people's voice out a little more. So like what we're doing is essentially calling news stations uh, to just simply ask if they're covering it. And if not, we ask why. Abreu says he has no connection to Standing Rock, but claims he is fighting for human rights. He says protesters are being mistreated. I asked him about the protesters being aggressive and breaking the law. I would say then that would just be more of a natural reaction is what it seems more to me, because from what I was seeing was just they were being aggressive. First, the, the police actually came in aggressive. Another protester I spoke with said he was calling from California and calling because local news organizations are not airing what he claims are assaults by police. Others calling, accusing that we are only working for the oil company. Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Our sister station in Bismarck had about 50 protesters outside of their station today. They were reportedly chanting, and one person was later arrested. Tune in tonight to Point of View with Chris Berg. Chris has an exclusive interview with the CEO of Energy Transfer Partners, Kelsey Warren, who has been accused of environmental racism by activists for rerouting the pipeline from north of Bismarck. He says the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers rerouted the pipeline, not his company. Let's listen. Well, that's, uh, that's stupid. That's how I respond to her. That's okay. just stupid. We pipeliners don't, <laughs> race doesn't come into play for pipeliners and infrastructure providers. And tonight on Valley News Live at 6, the Dakota Access Pipeline protests are starting to impact your children's education. Hear from students of a music teacher who's headed to the protest site on behalf of the National Guard and how they say he's been a positive influence in their lives.
Nothing eventful so far today, but things are changing later tonight. Let's get the latest from Hutch Johnson in First Weather. Hutch? Thanks, Andrea. As we take a gander at the radar here, we've seen an increase in clouds throughout the valley late today, and those clouds starting to produce a little precipitation out west. When you see pink on the radar, that is an indication of mixed precipitation. We have the potential for rain, freezing rain, freezing drizzle, sleet, and snow as we go through the overnight hours. It's all starting out west, and by the midnight hour, I expect it to spread into the Southern Valley. Where you see the deep colors here, the deep pinks near Cogswell, the deep blues not far from Fingal, and Jamestown, where we have those deep pink colors, we could possibly start seeing some of this reaching the ground, although not a lot of reports of that taking place yet. But Expect a chance of some icy mixture during the overnight hours. Icy sidewalks, icy roads, especially on north facing sides of buildings and streets. And those with a lot of snow on the ground have a colder surface than places with bare ground. So those will have the best potential for that freezing precipitation overnight. Now, tomorrow, some snow will coat the top of the ice. I'll have much more in your hour by hour forecast and what you can expect. But here in Fargo, the best chance for this mixture of, of ice and freezing fog mm -hmm. after midnight. More in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Hutch. You bet. No arrests have been made yet in a home invasion in Moorhead Sunday afternoon. Around 4 p.m., police responded to 3409 15th Street South on a report that a neighbor saw four black males force their way into a home. Police told us today that the homeowners were home during the burglary and reports that there were, was a weapon involved in the case are still being investigated. Police also say this was not a random act and that the suspect and victim knew each other. Tune in tonight to Valley News Live at 9 and 10 at 10. We'll dig into whether or not the crime in Moorhead is on the upswing. A Minnesota man is dead after an apparent rollover crash involving a deer in Polk County last night. It happened here in the Brandt Township area on Polk County Road 23. Police say 42-year-old Jason Johnston of East Grand Forks hit a deer, went into the ditch, and rolled his vehicle. Johnston was thrown from the vehicle and died at the scene. 25-year-old Armando Zavala of Fargo is facing DUI, hit and run, and fleeing charges after police say they saw him hit two parked cars early this morning near 15th Street and 25th Avenue South in Fargo. Officers tried to pull Zavala over, but they say he would not stop. They got his license plate and arrested him later at his home. It was a long-awaited acknowledgement and apology from the killer of Jacob Wetterling to the boy's parents. Confessed killer Danny Heinrich addressed Patty and Jerry Wetterling personally this morning, saying his heinous acts and selfishness are unforgivable and that he's sorry. Heinrich had remained stoic for most of today's proceedings, but wiped his eyes as both Patty Wetterling and Jacob's little sister gave their witness impact statements. Jacob's father, Jerry, thanked police and even Heinrich himself for allowing the family to know what happened the night of October 22, 1989. Heinrich was also in court on an unrelated case of child pornography for which he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. As part of that plea deal, he showed authorities where Wetterling's body was buried. The Grand Forks Airport Authority has landed a nearly $3 million settlement after FedEx recently moved its air cargo operation from Grand Forks to Fargo. Meanwhile, Fargo is giving FedEx a $600,000 tax break. The director of the Grand Forks Airport Authority says, in so many words, the loss of FedEx was a bit of a blow, but it's not the end of the world. The airport authority has received a $2.75 million settlement from FedEx because FedEx got out of its lease for this facility early. I think we grew uh, together with them and uh, would rather that they be here. But, but we're moving forward, and, and this was a fair um, agreement that we were able to come to. The $2.75 million settlement gives Grand Forks $900,000 to pay off bonds on the building it owns. Plus, they can set aside $1.8 million to replace the $700,000 a year loss of income from FedEx as they shop for a new tenant. The approaching holidays are often known as the season for giving. And today, people who work at Luther Family Ford gave their time and efforts to make Thanksgiving a little better for people who can use a helping hand. They packed boxes full of Thanksgiving food, everything needed to prepare a traditional Thanksgiving meal for families in need. And when the boxes are all ready to go, they are also helping make sure the, they uh, get where they need to go. 
The Salvation Army's Major Byron Medlock says there's something special about preparing and sharing a Thanksgiving meal in your own home. A couple of people who ran up and uh, I was locking up for the day and they were so worried that they were going to miss the Thanksgiving basket. And I said, no, you haven't missed it. You just come down to the Army and we'll get you filled out. And, but other than that, they're all excited about getting the baskets. Medlock says plans are in the works for Christmas meals as well. If you're in need, you have until Tuesday, a week from tomorrow, to sign up. No concert at the Fargo Dome today. Instead, some stages, miles of cable, and a bunch of food. The plan is to fill the dome with it. Students from not only the FM Metro area schools, but also from much of eastern North Dakota and western Minnesota are truly paying it forward. They have been busy collecting food and money to help people who can use an extra hand, especially at this special time of year. They're aiming to top last year's totals of nearly $30,000 and 22,000 pounds of food. The Fill the Dome project is in its 10th year. The food collected and money raised goes to the Great Plains Food Bank. If your phone, specifically your iPhone 6S, has been shutting down for no apparent reason, there's a way to fix it. That's still ahead tonight. And the radar starting to show a mix of wintry precipitation heading our way. Your hour-by-hour -hour forecast looks slippery. The latest right after this.